Which new cars hold their value the best? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you. To do this, I've used information from the car valuation company, Cap. They use loads of data to predict exactly how much a new car is worth when it gets older. I've used this data to compile a list of the cars from each major manufacturer that depreciate the least. Basically, I've ranked them based on how much they're gonna be worth as a percentage of their original purchase price when they're three years old and they've done 24,000 miles because this matches most car finance terms in the UK, which is how most people buy their cars. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching CarWow and the 25 cars that hold their value the best. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. The BMW M2 is the baby M car, but it's also one of the best. It looks great and is fabulous to drive. And it holds its value really well too. An M2 will still be worth 53.7% of its original £46,000 purchase price after three years. That means you've only lost, I say only, £21,000 or about 46% of its original cost. I know it sounds like quite a lot, but that's actually really good for a new car, especially if you compare it to the worst depreciating car on sale. That's the Fiat Tipo, which loses an insane 70.3% of its original recommended retail price in just three years. Yep, the M2 looks like an okay investment as far as cars go. Some petrol heads were up in arms when Jaguar started building SUVs, but it turns out that the F-Pace SUV holds its value better than any other Jaguar you can buy. After three years, it's still worth 53.9% of its original £41,000 purchase price. So you'll only lose about, say only yet again, <laughs> you'll only lose 46% of what you paid for it, or about £19,000 when you come to sell. The Cooper brand recently split from Seat, and the Formentor is its first all-new car that isn't based on a Seat. If you buy one of these sporty SUVs, it'll still be worth 54.1% of its original price after three years. This means that if you get one for a little over £27,000 new, you'll only lose about £13,000 when you sell it on. Basically, it's dropped in value by just 46%. The Nissan that depreciates the least is one of the oldest cars it makes. It's the GTR. This supercar slayer has been around since 2007, but a three-year-old model will still be worth 54.3% of its £86,000 asking price. So if you sell your GTR after three years, you'll lose £40,000, which is about 46% of what you originally paid for it. I thought the Jimny would hold its value better than any other Suzuki, but the slowest depreciating Suzuki is actually the brand new Swayze. I don't know how you say it. This guy is basically a Toyota Corolla Touring Sports with a different badge. And a three-year-old model will still be worth 54.7% of its original purchase price. So if you buy one now for around £27,000, you'll lose 45% of your investment when you sell it on, which is about £12,000. The Mustang is the most exciting new Ford you can buy, and it also holds its value really well too. A three-year-old car will still be worth 54.8% of its original purchase price. So if you buy one now for a little over £44,000 and sell it in three years' time, you'll lose out on around £20,000, which is only 45% of what you paid for it originally. Next on my list is the Megane RS, which holds its value better than any other new Renault. A three-year-old Megane RS will still be worth 54.9% of its original purchase price. This means that when you buy a new one for around £33,000, it'll only drop in value by about £15,000, or 45% of its original price when you sell it after three years. I thought massive luxury cars were supposed to drop in value like crazy, but the Bentley Bentayga actually performs really well in terms of depreciation. This super luxurious SUV is still worth 56% of its original £133,000 purchase price after three years. So when you sell it, you do lose out on £60,000, though that's still 44% of the original purchase price, so that's why it's a bit further down this list. 60 grand still a lot though, isn't it? Mazdas are usually reliable and good to drive, so no wonder they hold their value really well. And the CX-30 is the best of the Mazdas. This small SUV is still worth 56.3% of its £23,000 asking price after three years. So if you buy one, you'll only lose out on about £10,000 when you come to sell it, which is about 44% of the car's original purchase price. The Volvo XC40 is one of the best small SUVs you can buy, which is probably why it doesn't depreciate as much as other Volvos. After three years, it'll still be worth 56.7% of its original purchase price. If you buy a new one for a little over £25,000, you'll only have to knock off about £11,000, or 43% of its original purchase price, 
when you sell it. The Volkswagen that holds its value the best is the California. That's right, the camper van. You'll need £55,000 at least to get your hands on a new one, and it'll still be worth 56.9% of this purchase price after three years. That means you'll only lose about £24,000, which is 43% of the car's original RRP when you come to sell it on. Some limited edition cars hold their value pretty well, like the McLaren 765LT. McLaren is only going to build 765 of them, as the name suggests, and they'll still be worth 57.1% of their original £280,000 purchase price after three years. So if you get one and decide to sell it, it'll be worth about £120,000 less. Ooh, that's 43%, and that's why it fares quite well on this list. If you can afford a McLaren, yeah, 120 grand, it's nothing, it's just a day's fluctuation in your share prices, who cares? Next up is Mercedes, and the model which holds its value the best is the G-Class. These tough off-roaders are still worth 57.8% of their £101,000 purchase price after three years. Okay, so that means you'll lose about £43,000 when you sell it, but as a percentage, that's only about 42% of the original RRP. So it's not too bad at all as a percentage anyway. Second-hand Ferraris have a reputation for plummeting in value, but the 812 Superfast bucks this trend. This V12 supercar holds on to an impressive 57.9% of its £263,000 purchase price after three years. So if you're lucky enough to be able to buy one now, you can expect it to drop in value by around £111,000, or 42% of its original value, when you come to sell it. It probably holds its value so well because it sounds so good. In fact, if you want to hear what an 812 Superfast sounds like, I'll put a link up there. Just click on that and you can watch me race one against a Lamborghini SVJ and a 911 Turbo S. Next on my list is the Honda Jazz. This stinky hybrid is economical and practical, but not very exciting. But at least it holds its value well. After three years, it'll still be worth 58% of its original purchase price. That means you can buy a new one for about £19,000 and you'll only lose about eight grand when you sell it on, which is 42% what you originally paid for it. Polestar used to tune Volvos, but now it builds its own cars. And the one that holds its value the best is the Polestar 2. This electric SUV will be worth 58.2% of its initial £50,000 asking price after three years. So you can rest easy knowing you'll only lose out on about £21,000, or around 42% when you come to sell it on. I didn't expect Aston Martin to be so high on my list, but it turns out the DBX SUV holds its value really well and better than other Astons. After three years, it'll still be worth 58.3% of its initial £158,000 recommended retail price. So if you buy one now and sell it three years later, you'll only be out of pocket by about £66,000, or 42% of the original price. The Model 3 is Tesla's best-selling car, and it holds its value better than a Model S or a Model X. It'll still be worth 59.6% of its original £43,000 recommended retail price after three years. So when you come to sell it, you'll only have to drop the price by around £18,000. That's 40% of the original cost, which makes it the best performing electric car on sale in terms of depreciation. The Prius is one of the most popular cars Toyota makes, and it holds its value really well too. A new Prius will still be worth 59.7% of its original £25,000 purchase price after three years, which means a second-hand Prius will go for around £10,000. That's about 40% less than a brand new model. Lamborghini made its name with flashy supercars, but it's the Urus SUV that holds its value better than any other Lamborghini. One of these starts from around £160,000, and it'll still be worth 60% of this original purchase price after three years. Its value will only drop by about 40%, or £64,000. That's actually not too much depreciation on a Lamborghini, if you think about it. And it's good news if you're selling it, but not so good if you're trying to buy one on the used market because the value is still staying pretty strong. Now, if you want to see how a Lamborghini Urus compares to normal Lamborghini supercars, I'll put a link up there, click on it, you can go watch the video. There's another link below the video itself if you want to use that instead. Amazingly, the Urus isn't the best mega posh SUV when it comes to second-hand prices. The Rolls-Royce Cullinan is even better. It's still worth 60.1% of its original RRP after three years. This means a £272,000 Cullinan will drop in value by 40% after three years. That's £109,000. The Alpine A110 is a cracking little sports car, and it's not just a pretty face. 
it's a shrewd buy too, because a three-year-old model is still worth 61.1% of its original purchase price. You can get a new one for around £49,000 and it'll only drop in value by about 19 grand after three years. That's only 39% less than a brand new model. Third place on my list goes to the Audi RS Q3. This sporty SUV has a brilliant five-cylinder engine and goes like the clappers. And you won't just enjoy driving it, you might actually enjoy selling it too, because after three years, it will still be worth 63% of what you paid for it. If you get a new one for around 53,000 pounds, you'll only lose about 20 grand when you come to sell it. That's 37% of the original RRP. Land Rover doesn't have the best reliability record, but the new Defender claws back some points when it comes to depreciation. This brand new SUV will set you back from around £44,000 and it'll still be worth 63.1% of that after three years when you come to sell it. So it'll only drop in price by around 37%, so that's 16 grand when you finally sell it on. That's really impressive. Some Porsches are super collectible, especially limited edition 911s, but the mainstream Porsche that holds its value the best is actually the Macan. This £49,000 SUV will still be worth 64.9% of its original purchase price after three years. So if you buy one, you'll be just 17 grand or 35% of the original purchase price out of pocket when you come to sell it. That's pretty amazing really, especially when you consider it's one of the baby Porsches and it's basically an Audi Q5 underneath. Oh well. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you click on that box there, you can actually go to CarWow to see how much money you can save on a new car to help bring the price down so you're not so hit by depreciation when you do come to sell your car. If you click on those other windows there, you can watch some more content. Thanks for watching.